Hi fans of high quality entertainment. <clears throat> How are you? Almost knocked over my video camera. So, I bought myself some early Christmas presents. Five, one, two, three. One double CD and one, two, three, four single CDs. Try and guess what they are. Oh, too difficult. I bought two magazines. This is going to be a long video. Watch all of it. Okay? Sit down. Latest issue of Mojo Magazine, although Probably the latest issue is already out in the UK, and this is the one before it. Because here in Canada, we get things a month late, and I'm not very happy. And Record Collector, which I've started buying in the last year. I really enjoy this magazine, too. So Mojo and Record Collector are my two favorite rock music magazines. Write that down. And Classic Rock Magazine is okay. It's pretty good sometimes. And Uncut, not as much, but once in a blue moon I'll buy it. And I bought this book. I looked at it and I said, I'm going to buy this book. Martin Popoff, I believe he did, uh, I think there's a Blue Easter Cult book that he wrote, which was excellent. And this one, Satisfaction, 10 Albums That Changed My Life, Martin Popoff, forward by Nancy Wilson of Heart. And I just skimmed through it quickly, like, like this. And I said, I'm going to buy that book. It looks interesting. No, it's, uh, I love knowing what, what other artists' favorite albums are. For instance, if I remember to put it in the video, if I don't, just check my community. But here is Weird Al's favorite al... Take two. This is Weird Al's favorite album from 2020. If the picture isn't there, it's sparks, a steady drip, drip, drip. Okay, so let me, seriously here, I wonder if anybody, just skimming this quickly, I bet you I will find a Sparks album here somewhere. I'm seeing uh, Ozzy Osbourne, that's interesting, Led Zeppelin 3, there's there. Uh, Deep Purple Machine Head, Montrose, their debut album, Aerosmith Rocks, and Van Halen's, oh sorry, Jack Ely from Ozzy Osbourne. So that's not as interesting. <laughs> Nothing against Jackie, uh, Jackie Lee. I'm just more familiar with Ozzy. Let me see here. I'm not going to be happy if there's not a mention of Sparks in this book. There's always, in almost any rock magazine, there's some at least little mention of Sparks. Why did I buy this book? Just joking. Huh, Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull. Surprisingly, Captain Beefheart Trout Mask Replica. That'll be interesting to read. Blind Faith, one of my all-time favorite albums. One of his, too. Led Zeppelin I. Uh, King Crimson and the Court of the Crimson King. Uh, the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Are you experienced? Yes, I am experienced. At being an idiot. Let's see here. Dan McCafferty, the great vocalist, original vocalist for Nazareth. What would he pick? Hmm. 
Good choices, Dan. The Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. He says, I mean, when Sgt. Pepper came out, I thought I should become an interior decorator or something because this is way beyond what I know. Laughs. Led Zeppelin IV, The Who Tommy. I just listened to that last night. Very cool. There is always somebody that would choose at least Sparks Kimono My House. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first rock music book without a mention of Sparks. Ooh, I like that. Grand Funk Railroad, Closer to Home. Billy Sheehan of David Lee Roth and... He played with... Yes, didn't he? Or... Oh, Mr. Big. Yeah, he chose Grand Funk Closer to Home. <sighs> book sucks. <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't see any sparks. If I, if I don't edit this video, this is going to be a 20 minute section where I'm looking for a sparks album. I don't see one, but I might still come across one. But there you go. I'm very glad I bought it, even though there's probably no mention of sparks in the book. And then Mojo Queen with Elvis Costello, uh, Sinead O'Connor, John Lennon Unseen, Ray Davies. I like this uh, in the very back sheet there, back page. Hello, goodbye. It talks about when an artist joined a band and when they left. It's a little story. And this one is on Kevin Godley of 10CC, great band. I'll read it to you now. I'm just joking. Then they have album reviews. Adam and the Ants. I loved uh, that, that debut album of theirs. It was pretty darn good. Ant Music. Article on Queen. I'm trying to take my time and hurry up at the same time. His uh, 40th anniversary of uh, John Lennon's death is of course coming up. And I might actually do a new, I, I do have an older one about uh, my experience of the night he died, but I might redo it and add a word or two to it. Ray Davies of the Kinks, great band. So that's that. And also, Record Collector, New Order, John Anderson, I like that. I am still, yes. Yes, you are. Yellow, uh, Album Reviews, Black Sabbath, Thin Lizzy. Dire Straits, the studio albums. New Order. Yellow. Uh, Wayne Fontana, this article on John Anderson. So lots of re reading material for me, and also trying to find a Sparks album in that book. So for CDs, I bought, <laughs> I actually just bought a, not a new, but a, a remastered version of this because the first 
CD I had of this particular album was from, you know, when they started making CDs. But this is a brand new 40th anniversary celebration of this iconic album with a 20-page booklet and a brand new master created from the original tapes for optimal speaker smashing dynamic range and a live album of newly unearthed previously unreleased concert recorded in Belfast in 1981. Never before seen photos and rare memorabilia, two CDs. It is the Ace of Spades, again. Definitely one of my favorite kick, but I could say ass, kick ass albums. Now it's very important. You see these this this height sticker. That's that's what they call it. There's also a didn't read the story of Ace of Spades told through previously unpublished interviews with the people that were there. So there's the hype sticker. I always like to keep those in pristine condition. I like this. It's uh, like a book. It's sturdy. Ooh, very nice. Love that album cover. When I go into a CD store, there's other Motorhead CD CDs, you know, a few of them. Uh, and I just don't know which, I know they're all basically great, but you know, but there's still some that are better than others. And one I've been looking for, I, I could order it from Amazon, but I like to, you know, I do like to shop locally, is Orgas Orgasmatron. Uh, let me know what other Motorhead albums, I do have the, uh, their live album the deluxe issue. Is it Hammersmith? I don't know. So a nice booklet. <laughs> and sadly they have all passed away, all three of the band members from this. Fast, yeah, Fast Eddie Clark and Phil, Filthy Animal Taylor. May they rest in peace. May they rock in peace, actually. They are. They're rocking wherever they are. I will definitely be blasting this tonight on my headphones. And then unreleased live. This one is uh, the CD is tricky to get out. It's very thin. Real, seriously, it's hard. Yeah, just yeah. There you go. I've always liked this band, but I never bought any of their albums until now. This is a greatest hit CD. I need a knife. I know, some of you are saying, and you need a life. But I've always enjoyed some of their songs. Uh, it is...
The White Stripes Greatest Hits. Yeah, Icky Thump. You know, there's only like three or four songs that I'm really familiar with and the rest. But there's the track listing if you can read that or pause the video to read it. Showing a bit too much cleavage, I apologize. And this, I was listening to The Who last night. I really don't listen to them as much as I really should, but I do. I love The Who. Uh, just spit. Uh, I listen to Tommy, and I listen to... I guess I'll let... Yeah, I'll listen. I was going to listen to more, but Quadrophonia is the one album I can't completely ever get into, but I'm going to try again tonight to listen to it. I enjoy, I think I enjoy certain tracks, The Real Me, uh, Bell Boy, uh, Love, Ra or Love Rain or Me, is that how you say it? Uh, but I mean, as a complete album, I don't listen to it from start to finish. I kind of get... I wouldn't say bored, I just, I don't, I have, I've never given it enough chance. I, I have to. I have to take the time to listen to it. It's almost similar to uh, the Rolling Stones' Exile on Main Street. It's like I love the first side, first two sides, and then I kind of drift off a little bit. So this is how you tear a height sticker so you never see it again, like that, okay? So this is The Who, live at the Fillmore East, 1968. And I was watching some reaction videos on YouTube again last night and uh, for their last performance of Won't Get Fooled Again and uh, other live tracks. And Keith, Mo well, the whole band, of course. Such a great live act. And Keith Moon was like a monster on the drums. Even the original version of Won't Get Fooled Again. You really... I never get tired of hearing the song, seriously. But there's times you kind of take his drumming... You take the whole band for granted because he hears some of the songs so much. But uh, Pete Townsend, I believe, along with Frank Zapp, are, are one, and, you know, Brian Wilson, and maybe Lennon and McCartney, they're geniuses. Just geniuses, just like me. <laughs> There's no booklet. Yes, there is. Don't cry. There's a booklet. And I'll let you know what is on this album in a minute. Oh my god, look at all those words. I can't read all those. You could never see a more happy band than The Who. So this contains Summertime Blues, Fortune Teller, Tattoo, Little Billy, I Can't Explain, Happy Jack, Relax, I'm a Boy, A Quick One While He's Away, My Way, Come On Everybody, Shake Him All Over, and Boris the Spider. And CD2 is just one song, My Generation, 33 minutes and 2 seconds. So lastly, more than one of you viewers out there, including Derek Roberts, have bugged me and bugged me and bugged me about this artist. And I absolutely think he's a great talent. I used to buy his albums in the 70s. And the very first one I ever heard 
was tumbleweed tumbleweed connection by Elton John and uh, I believe my one of my older brothers had this and I kind of enjoyed it and but there was at one point where I got used you know hearing hearing this album a few times and I really started to appreciate it and I bought uh, a few of his albums like I said Caribou uh, the last one I bought was uh, the Brownstone what do you ever call that album I forget uh, the last one I bought was Rock of the Westies, which was kind of a disappointment, and then I gave up on it. But I'm still, you know, still definitely a talented artist. One of the greats. Okay, Derek Roberts. <laughs> Love that, that album cover. Country Comfort, also covered by Rod Stewart. You may have heard of him. Actually, I believe I read somewhere that this is one of Elton John's favorite albums of his. Or maybe his favorite. Country comforts. I forget the rest of the words. So there's that one. And this album my brother had, Elton John. I gotta take the stupid security label off. Yeah, my my second oldest brother had this, and I enjoyed hearing it, but I never owned it myself on CD or vinyl until today. Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. Thank you. Benny, Benny, Benny and the Jets. Thank you again. The hazards of security labels. Once again, a classic album cover. Yeah, Don't Shoot Me, I'm Just the Piano Player. I had that at one point and enjoyed, enjoyed it. I think there's a later version of this, another remastered version, but I'm happy with this one, which is remastered. And that's it. That is my unboxing of CDs and magazines and a book with no mention of sparks in it. But I'm not bitter. So, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out my my playlists here, unless I forget to put them here, then I just look like a complete idiot. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.